And finally tonight, if your kids come home from school and they've got climate anxiety and they're learning lots of woke things from their teachers, or if you're one of those kids watching right now, I need you to see this. It's from the Oxford Union. It was a debate over climate change. This is Constantine Kisson. Watch. Now, I want to talk to those of you who are woke and who are open to rational argument. A small minority, I accept. <laughs> Because one of the tenets of wokeness is, of course, that your feelings matter more than the truth. But I believe in you. I believe there are those of you here who are woke, who are open to rational arguments, so let me make one. We are told that your generation cares more than any other about one issue in particular, and that issue is climate change. We are told that many of you suffer from climate anxiety. You wish to save the planet. And for tonight, and tonight only, I will join you I will join you in worshipping at the feet of St. Greta of climate change. <laughs> Let us all accept right here, right now, that we are living through a climate emergency and our stocks of polar bears are running extremely low. I join you in this view. I truly do. Now, what are we to do about this huge problem facing humanity? What can we in Britain do? We can only do one thing. You know why? This country is responsible for 2% of global carbon emissions, which means that if Britain was to sink into the sea right now, it would make absolutely no difference to the issue of climate change. You know why? Because the future of the climate is going to be decided in Asia and in Latin America by poor people who couldn't give a about saving the planet. 120 million people in China do not have enough food. I don't mean that they don't get dessert, I mean they suffer from malnutrition. That means that their immune system is breaking down because they don't have enough food. You're not going to get them to stay poor. Imagine you're Xi Jinping, the leader of China. When you were 10 years old, there was a revolution, a cultural revolution in your country, and people came and they put your father in prison. Your mother had to denounce him. Your sister killed herself, and you, no longer enjoying the protection of your formerly powerful father, were sent to a village where you lived in a cave house. And here you are, decades later, you have clawed your way up the bloody and greasy pole of Chinese politics to be the undisputed supreme leader of the very Communist Party that destroyed your family. And you know that the main thing you have to do to survive and to stay in power is to deliver the one thing that the people of China want, prosperity, economic growth. Where do you think climate change ranks on Xi Jinping's list of priorities? I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one thing we can do in this country to stop climate change, and that is to make scientific and technological breakthroughs that will create the clean energy that is not only clean, but also cheap. And the only thing that wokeness has to offer in exchange is to brainwash bright young minds like you to believe that you are victims, to believe that you have no agency, to believe that what you must do to improve the world is to complain, is to protest, is to throw soup on paintings. And we on this side of the house are not on this side of the house because we do not wish to improve the world. We sit on this side of the house because we know that the way to improve the world is to work, is to create, it is to build. And the problem with woke culture is that it has trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Amazing, incredible, fantastic, cathartic even. Cathartic because you don't hear that very often, do you? Certainly not in social media where it's going viral right now, or for that matter, in the regular media, and certainly not on a college campus. Think about that. That debate was going on at Oxford, a high-end college campus in England. Try having a debate like that on an American college campus. Well, that, once again, was Constantine Kisson. He is actually a stand-up comedian turned political pundit and commentator, and he's got a great podcast, I'm sure you're familiar with it, Trigger Nometry, that he does on YouTube, and his book is worth reading. I've read it, you should too. It's called An Immigrant's Love Letter to the West. That's right, he was born and raised in Russia and made his way over to the West 
And that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because you don't think that way, that logically, that clearly, if you were raised, sadly, in England or in America. Well done, Constantine. Keep up the great work. That's it for tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow, same time, same place. In the meantime, I'll see you on the radio.